Hello and welcome to today's episode of Cooking Out and About. Today we're coming to you from Marco's Italian Cold Cuts, Main Street in Woburn. We're going to be covering a couple variety of uh, Italian dishes tonight and we're going to start off with my family's sauce and just something that's been in our family for a few years. My grandmother passed it on to my mother and she's passed it on to me. Uh, what you want to do, you want to have a good sized pot because you know it's going to be quite a lot of sauce. What we're making is actually going to serve about six to eight people depending on how hungry everybody is. Um, so first off, you want to start off with some olive oil, uh, either extra virgin olive oil, just regular olive oil, or uh, even a 10% olive oil is, is really good and what we, we use a lot in my family. And uh, about a quarter cup, just enough to fill the bottom of the pan. And you want to keep everything on medium, medium heat, medium to medium low heat, because you don't want to, your meat, which we're going to be putting in, to scorch. Uh, what we're going to be using today is just a boneless spare rib, and you just place those in and these will sit in the sauce the whole time that we're cooking and they will uh, add the the flavor be basically where you get your all your flavor from your sauce okay uh, let me talk to you a little bit i was doing some research on italy and and such and i found out that Italy is actually the official name is the Italian Republic, but uh, it came to be known as just plain old Italy. I guess they knocked off the Republic. And the largest city in Italy is Rome, when within Rome, of course, is Vatican City, which is actually a small country in itself and it has their own flag, flag and, and all. And if you look at a map, you'll see uh, that Italy is shaped like a boot and it's off kicking. Sicily away. I don't know if they don't like Sicily. I know I'm Sicilian, so hope they're not trying to kick us out. Okay, once you get that going, it takes just a little bit to brown it. Like I said, be real careful. I scorched them once, and I said, didn't realize what I had done until it was too late, and I had made the sauce already, and I ended up having to start the whole thing over because it just had a real nasty taste. Okay, get it a nice a light brown. It's going to cook. Like I said, since it's going to be in the sauce, it's going to be cooking. You can see it's starting to sizzle. Getting to be just a light brown. All right, that's good enough. So watch the heat. And what we're going to do for the sauce, what we use, is just these pastine kitchen-ready ground tomatoes. And I'm using the 28-ounce size can. And you're going to put two of those in. And of course, this recipe can be doubled or halved, either way you want to go. So actually, I think I used too big of a pot for this one, but that's OK. Plenty of room to, for it to expand. And we're going to be putting some meatballs in, in later, so that'll be good for the extra room. And then we're going to add a can, um, I'm using Contenitas, a tomato paste, 12-ounce can for the, for the two cans. And that's just to uh, help make it get a lot thicker as the sauce will simmer. Now, after that, you're going to add some water as well. Uh, the amount of water. About a, about a half a can for each can of tomato sauce that you use. So if you're making a larger batch or a smaller batch, just use it accordingly. All right. And you might want to stir it up just a bit. Again, you want to keep it on low heat. There we go. And we're going to put a cover on it. And you're going to have it cover it for about two to two and a half hours. Now, in the meantime, you know, go about your daily activities while that's sitting there simmering. But about half an hour or so before you're going to be taking the cover off, which we'll do, uh, you want to get started on your meatballs. Now, I'm just going to move this over. Now, for that, I'm going to take a pound of, we're going to be using a pound of meat, which will make about 16 good-sized meatballs. 
Now, for that, we're going to start off and take two eggs. And we got a half a cup of milk. Okay. Now what uh, you need to put in a four tablespoons of grated Romano or Parmesan cheese. Now you can use fresh stuff. Um, you can also, I get this stuff uh, just to make it a little easier for the cooking part. I'll show you later what we can do for when you actually go to put on your food. Uh, just some canned stuff. The pastine products is really, uh, is a quite, quite a nice type. And just four tablespoons of this. About, about a teaspoon of salt. You know, you can measure it. And a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And then a teaspoon, or excuse me, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. Not the garlic salt. To be confused with that, just the garlic powder. And there we go. Put a little too much on there. Okay, now you can use an electric mixer or a wire whisk. Mix that all up real good. Okay, then we're gonna stir in uh, Italian breadcrumbs, and I'm just using the Progresso kind of breadcrumbs, which are a real good kind. They're all the spices and parsley is already pre-mixed. Put in half a cup of that. And now here's where the fun part comes in. You might wanna have the kids do this for you. You know, kids love to get messy. And you're gonna mix in a pound of hamburger. And best way to do this is just take your hands and smoosh it all together. Get it good, get it real mixed in real good. Now, wanna wanna have a plate getting ready going to just start heating up a pan with, again, with the olive oil that we were using. Again, you can use the 10% or you can use the, um, we're going to use the whole olive oil. Our extra virgin is also, you know, will also work, but I prefer just the regular olive oil or the 10%. And I'm just going to put a small amount in so that we know when it starts to sizzle, it'll be ready. Now to make them, once you get it all mixed in, you just take, take your meatballs and form it into a nice little ball. You know, depending on the size, you don't want to make them too large since they are going to go in the sauce and they can break easily. Uh, make it a good size, good size ball though. Uh, one thing I want to tell you, and my, uh, family used to do, and, and Trulio, who we'll be talking to later, said it seems to be a Sicilian way of doing things. My family used to uh, put raisins in the meatball. Uh, I never really cared for it, but I asked my uncle once why they did that, and he says he thinks it was because back in the, you know, many years ago when the meat was a lot more expensive, a way to kind of as a filler for the meat was to put in the, um, the raisins. Okay, looks like our oil's already. So we're going to go put our meatballs in. Well, that'll be good for now. We'll want to leave plenty of room. Now, since these are going to go in the sauce, you want to have it be ready. Um, you don't need to cook it all the way through. You want to get it well browned, though. And that way, uh, the meat, the sauce, once they go in the sauce, the sauce will continue to cook the meatballs for you. Uh, sometimes, though, this is a good way. Sometimes at my home, we'll do, you know, if my mom's not in the mood to cook a lot or if we're just not that hungry, we'll just make up a bowl of pasta and my mom will just fry up some meatballs. In that case, you do, of course, have to cook it all the way through. Uh, sometimes you just cut some in half and kind of make some more flat, meat flats and rather meatballs because it cooks a little easier to get the middle done.
and they're pretty good just themselves. Uh, another way she kind of got me when I was younger, I never liked meatloaf. And I was never even convinced. I was like, no, it's not, it's not the same, you know, as, as a meatball. And I guess once my grandmother actually, because she was so upset with me because I wouldn't eat meatloaf, she made, uh, took her meatloaf recipe and made it all into meatballs. And I ate it and she's like, see, see, you did the, eat that. You do like meatloaf. And so my mom now, when she, when she makes meatloaf, she'll just use this recipe instead. So I was a very picky child, picky eater as a child. All right, now what you're going to do after you get the, pot, the sauce simmering for the two and a half hours, you're just going to take the cover off. And if you get a meatball that's ready to go, I just think we got one. See, it's, you know, the nice brown. You just gently put them into your sauce one by one. I'm just going to wait on these ones. And then for the rest of the time, you cook the sauce with the cover off. Now, you, can, you don't really need to stir it that much after that. And if you do, you want to be real careful because the meatballs are very soft and they'll get, um, they can break up and you'll have more meat sauce rather than meatballs and sauce. And the pork meat as well can break up. Uh, one thing I want to uh, add to the pork meat is you can use the type with the bone on it. But if you do that, you want to be very careful when you go to eat it because the bones will break off and you don't want to be choking on a bone. Uh, one thing you can do once you have all your sauce ready, if, you know, Chulio is going to show us how to do a little something special later on, but if you don't want to do, you know, you don't have a lot of time to cook and you don't want to be going all out, you can do a mock lasagna. And what we do in my house for that is you just take some ricotta cheese and you add it, you know, you put it on top of your pasta. Usually we do it with like a rigatoni uh, rather than like a spaghetti and you just add your sauce to it, mix it all together, and you have a nice mock lasagna. Another thing we do in my family, something my grandmother always did, was we grated our, she always had grated cheese, and when we were growing up there, we had like a, a hand grater. You had to sit there and, you know, cut your fingers sometimes. Uh, one thing you can get, and you can get these at a kitchen store, they're really nice, uh, is a hand grater. And I suggest a longer kind, just because it's easier to, to use. The way it works is you put the grater on, and then you would stick your cheese, you know, a Romano or Parmesan, whatever you prefer, which you can get here in the box. And you stick it in, and then you just go ahead and grate it on. It's nice having that nice, real fresh cheese. All right, that's all we have for this. We'll be right back, and Trulio is going to show us how he makes chicken Parmesan. This message sponsored by Ad Slender this year. Okay, we're back and we're here with Trulio, the owner of Marco's, and he's going to show us how to do how he makes chicken cutlet parmesan. Okay, what do we start with? We start with some uh, fresh boneless chicken and just fillet it just like that. Cut it open, spread it out. Do another one right here. Now, do you get your chicken free bone? Free bone, yes. Much okay. easier. You don't have to bone it. Okay. Then we have some eggs here. Okay. Put some salt, a couple of pinches of salt. Same thing on black pepper. Some parsley. And we got some garlic here, garlic powder, okay. and some freshly ground Romano cheese. Okay. It's no real measurements, just a pinch here, pinch My there. My mother taught me how to not even measure, just put it in. That's the way she's been teaching me how to cook. She's 75 years old and she's still teaching me and I'm still learning. So we beat it up like this, nice. Now what you made, now how many eggs does it take, say, for like a family of four? A family of four, you probably want to use one egg per person. And it all depends on uh, how much uh, chicken you're going to use. We get the chicken breast, put it in like that. And here we have plain breadcrumbs, because you get all your seasoning in the egg. Little breadcrumbs, squish it down. Do you make your own breadcrumbs? Or yes, do I do. Hard bread I have, that's all I do is grate it up. Okay. And now how do you get the bread hard? Does it come like that? Do you no, just, you just what happens is, stale? yeah, just make it, cut it up and uh, have it stale. It'll go stale in about two days. And that's that right there. Okay, great. We'll do this one here. 
Do you recommend any particular kind of bread? Uh, any, any, any type of bread, or you can buy it here at Marco's. We have it here. Okay, and that's that. Let's put the chicken cutlet in the frying pan. Now, how much oil do you, do you, uh, you know, just deep oil or deep, light? Deep frying. Uh, try to cover the, um, the cutlets. Now, if cooking it this way, now I know at home we just cook it. We don't use quite as much oil. Then we flip them over. This way, do you yeah. need to still flip it? Yes, you should still flip them. Yes. Okay. Now, how, long, how do you know when it's done? Oh, you I mean, can tell it's a nice it's done. thin it, it, one, so you don't have to right. worry about it being thick and Once they get the a little browner than this, that you can tell it's done. And if you're not sure, you can just cut it. Taste cut it. the middle of it. You can tell if, it, if the chicken is cooked. Right. That's real important, I know, to have the cooking chicken. Excuse me. Yes, Thoroughly absolutely. cooked. Don't want any pink in there. No, nope, definitely of, uh, not. Because of salmonella poisoning and all that good bad stuff, rather not <laughs> be very young. That's cooking up real nice now. Flip it over one more time. Well, tell us what you were telling us before. Now, you just became a father recently, is that correct? Yes. I had two baby girls. See? Oh, and what are their names? They are beautiful. Michelle Diana and Ana Maria. Ana Maria is after my mother. How old are they now? They have a little over two months. I can't wait to get home and see them. I really can't. <laughs> okay. Just put it on a piece of paper towel. Mm -hmm. Soak up Why all the that? oil. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Julio is going to be making us some chicken parm to show us, and he'll explain again real quick how he does that after we go through some desserts that I've got. The first one I discovered only a few years ago, and it is cannolis. And once I had one, I just fell in love with them. And what we're going to do is we're just going to use a pre-made cannoli shell that, shell that I found in the supermarket, rather than, well, you know, we're not going to make our own today. And the filling that we're going to use is one and a half cups of regatta cheese, a three quarters cups of powdered sugar, and about a half a teaspoon or so of vanilla. I added a little more than the recipe on the box called because I liked my uh, filling a little sweeter. So I've just gone and taken a large pastry bag with a large star tip. And we'll start in the middle. And you just squeeze it till it fills up. And then pull it back. Then you go to the other side. And again, squeeze it. Fill it up. Those are the other two. Now, there are other fillings, of course, you know, you could put in. I've had a cream filling. Uh, chocolate cream filling. If you wanted to change this into a, a chocolate cannoli, you could always just add some chocolate powder to it. And there we go. Now, for this, you can either just leave them plain like this. Some people might want to add walnuts to them if you like, if you're a nut fan. Uh, again, with the walnuts I mentioned in the first show, you want to really be careful if you're having guests to make sure your guests are not allergic to walnuts because, um, you know, they wouldn't be able to enjoy your dessert. Uh, what we're going to do for the first one is we're just going to roll it in some chocolate mini chips that I have. Do that with the other one. And we'll leave one plain. And one thing else you can do that I did was to... Um, I dipped, I melted some chocolate, just some regular semi-seat chocolate in the microwave for about a minute. Then you stir it up until it keeps getting melted. And I dipped the shell in that. And that's it. Now, the other thing I want to do for dessert is an anisette cookie, which is a real simple dessert. Nice, sweet, not too sweet of a cookie, but it's a real good thing, something I loved when I was growing up. All right, to start off with that, I'm going to take three eggs. And this is actually a half a recipe, so you know, you think three eggs sounds like a lot. The whole recipe actually calls for six, but I'm just going to do a half recipe here. And this half recipe makes about two and a half to three dozen, depending on the size of the egg. Then you're going to add some sh half a cup of sugar, 
and two teaspoons of vanilla. One thing with vanilla, always measure it outside of your bowl because sometimes it can overflow in your spoon and you don't want to, like I just did, don't want to have too much extra vanilla in. And you just mix those up. Oh, good. Okay, and after that, you're going to add one cup of shortening. Just mix it up real good, real well. Okay, and then for our flour, I have that all ready. We need three cups of flour. And I'm gonna go ahead and just, I put it in a separate bowl so we could, you know, since we're gonna to have to gradually mix it. And into that, I'm also going to add three and a half teaspoons of baking powder, not soda. The soda is what makes your regular kind of cookies rise. And we don't want these to rise or spread or anything. And let's get the half. And about half a teaspoon of salt. And you can mix that up a little and then just mix that in. Now this is gonna get kind of a, it's gonna be a thick mixture. You may have to scrape the sides here and there. Get that out of your way. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that for now. And what will happen once you get it going, you know, like I said, it'll be a bit of a thick mixture. You're just gonna take it and you're gonna shape it in the shape of a meatball, basically. About that same size, a little small if you want more cookies, a little more if you want less cookies. Excuse me, yes. Okay, and this is what they're gonna look like when they're done. Now you cook them at 375 for about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on your oven. You want it to be this light golden brown. You, know, you could go a little darker. You just wanna watch the bottom sometimes will cook faster. And it is a hard cookie. And what the frosting consists of it's just some powdered sugar, some water, and then where the anisette flavor comes in is from the anisette extract. Now you want to be really careful with this on how much you put in. Um, I read a cookbook once that actually said called for like a whole bottle and putting it in the cookie mix itself. And that, in my opinion, is just way too much because this is uh, just a very strong tasting uh, flavoring. So I've gone ahead and mixed the anisette in with some water and some powdered sugar and you want it to be kind of like a thick, you know, you don't want it real runny and you don't want it too thick. You know, not something you could actually like decorate or do a writing with if you're doing a cake. But just a nice, thick moving sauce. And I'm using a pastry brush, or brush, you know, you use, we use it in the summertime for barbecue. And, you know, you could just brush it on your cookie. Uh, you know, you probably wouldn't want to have it on a plate right away. Maybe more on a, more to have it on a, like the, um, still on the cookie tray or, or perhaps even on like a, a, um, a cookie sheet, uh, rack, excuse me. All right, I'll just frost those up. I like the thicker, like I said, I like to keep it a little bit thicker because then it, when, when it dries, you can still see it. If it's too thin, it'll dry and it doesn't look like there's anything on there. You know, put a good amount, because that's where all the flavor is and where the, the most of the sweetness, you notice there's not really a lot of sugar in, in the cookie itself. Now, clearly you cannot just leave your cookies just looking plain old cookies like that. So you want to add some color. And I'm just using some candy sprinkles. There you go. All right, we're going to take another quick break, and Trulio is going to show us how the chicken parmesan looks when it's all done. Sally wants to be a surgeon when she grows up. Maybe someday she'll operate on you. Now, would you like this free booklet of simple ways you can help improve her education? Call 1-800-96-PROMISE. Okay, we're back here with Tulio once again, and he's, our chicken parmesan is done. So why don't you tell us once again, it's real quick, how, how we get to this delicious looking treat. Boneless chicken breast, uh, eggs with seasoning, uh, you put it in the egg first, then in the uh, breadcrumbs, fry it, a uh, little sauce on the bottom of the pan, 
and um, chicken on top and more sauce on top and grated cheese and mozzarella cheese. And what's the temperature again? Uh, 350 for about 20 minutes. Excellent. Well, we thank you very much for allowing us to be here. So again, we are, for call me, we are here today at Marco's in downtown Woburn Center. And did you have one thing you wanted to add to If the they audience? have any question, they can call me here, 933-9544, or write to me at uh, 389 Main Street in uh, Woburn. Excellent. Well, thank you. Once again, I'm Nancy Marie. And remember, no matter what you're cooking or where you're cooking, have fun doing it. We'll see you next time.